This is the Project Management Podcast. We bring project management topics to beginners and experts. Find us on the web at www.thepmpodcast.com or send your emails to pmpodcast at gmail.com. Hello and welcome to episode number 120. I am Cornelius Fichtner. This is the Project Management Podcast for the 30th of May 2009. Nice to have you with us. Companies and project managers have believed for years that their only responsibility was, you know, mainly a financial one, like maximizing the value for your shareholders or finishing your project on time and on budget. Sustainability is a new idea where the corporate sector incorporates social and environmental concerns in its strategies and plays a more responsible role in the world. But uh, why should project managers care about it? Our guest today is Jennifer Russell. She argues that with some effort and with some foresight, sustainability can be integrated seamlessly into the goals of almost all organizations. Furthermore, it's not necessarily the chief executives who must have the initiative and implement sustainability. Project managers have the ability to introduce sustainability in their work and promote social good within their firms. If properly understood and executed, sustainability is a win-win strategy that benefits the project, the company, as well as the society. We will get into that discussion with Jennifer in just a few minutes. First, we have a gizmo for you, and we also have the winners of our last promotional giveaway. And if you remember, we were giving away a copy of Duck's Raymond Size book, SharePoint for Project Managers. And the winners are Eliseo Pita from A Coruna, Spain. He's one of our free podcast listeners. And Glenn Rogers from Ontario in Canada. He is a subscriber to our premium podcast. Congratulations. And I also want to apologize to Fernando Lenga, who is one of the winners of Tom Vergus's book, The Invisible Elephant. Fernando is, of course, from Buenos Aires in Argentina. And not like I said in the last episode that he is from Buenos Aires in Brazil. Hmm. Now, that's an embarrassing mistake. In any case, I now have a great gizmo for you. It's a project management game, a board game that you can play with a group of project managers. And here is Kay Weiss from SuccessfulProjects.com to tell us all about her game. Hello, Kay, and welcome to the program. Hello, Cornelius. Thank you for having me. On your website, you're selling the Project Risk Board Game. What is it? Well, it is a fun, hands-on game designed for project managers to learn about risk management for general learning, for PMP exam prep, or for simulation of the real project risk scenarios. It can be used in both the classroom and as a project team building activity. The, the board game's base is a project path weaving through the familiar processes of initiating, planning, executing, control, monitoring, and closing. And there's a project manager pawn that progresses through the path over 12 rounds of project play representing project reporting periods. Progressing steps, cost chips, and returns chips And there are six game pawns representing team members that can be lost through certain project risks occurring. Risk cards are both negative and positive, also known as opportunities. And most of these risks come from an identified risk log, but like real life, some come from out of the blue. And when playing competitively, the winner is the one who finishes to the end or closest to the end with the most chips and most team members left. Sounds like fun. Why did you create it? I've been a project management teacher for about 10 years, and I wanted to use professional games to make project management more relatable, fun, and emotional. A lot of the learning activities I found were not relevant to project management. I looked long and hard before I decided I had to invent something myself. 
Neat, neat, neat. Now, it's, it sounds like this is not something for children, right? This is more something for project managers and project team members and, and business environment. Yeah, you're right. It's primarily for college students and professional adults that are learning about project management. While the game's easy to play and has the look and feel of the best-selling games, it is a serious learning tool made to be used by instructors for project management students and members of project teams. It's great for those studying for their PMP exam. How many people can play and how long does it take to go through these 12 steps that you mentioned? I originally designed it to be played in the classroom where we play multiple teams against each other with each team size anywhere from one to five students and some classrooms running 10 teams in a competition and that type of gameplay takes about an hour. In another use, when I teach a two-day, 16-hour project management class, Each student gets their own game board, which we leave set out the entire time. Then we play game rounds about every hour or so to help break things up a bit. But to sit down, read the instructions, and play straight through without discussion, it would take about 40 minutes. But it definitely generates productive discussion, so I wouldn't consider this 40-minute approach its ideal use. Wow, it really sounds like fun. I'm looking forward to playing it. So you already mentioned it's for training purposes, but it also likes, sounds like a lot of fun. What's the real purpose that you would attribute to the game? The real purpose is to help players become more proactive and professional in their life and project risk management. At its simplest form, the game reinforces that with negative risks, you have four options, mitigate, avoid, transfer, and accept, and with positive risks, you have four options. When playing Project Risk, you think deeply about the use of these strategies, and you consider their cost, timing, and your risk tolerance. The purpose is to have this habit carry over into your projects and your life. The risk experience in the game is quite dimensional, involving time, integrating with other competitors, relational to team members bailing, and limited chip resources. The game also reinforces the risk lingo, making people talk about risk triggers, probabilities, issues, logs, workarounds, and the project management processes. So. For the newer project management student, they're practicing the PM back lingo. Wonderful. I, I see on my other PM website, uh, PM Opinion, somebody has already rated it with five stars. So what other kind of feedback are you getting for your customers? Well, the feedback has changed as the game evolved. The early versions of the game required a facilitator, and it was too complicated. I made a lot of evolutions to the game over time, and now people can play it with about the same introductory time as it takes to learn how to play Monopoly. The feedback now is very enthusiastic. And it's gotten rather predictable. Most participants, when they're done, they kind of say the same thing. It's some version of, this is so cool, I'd like to play it again. And then they want to <laughs> take the game set home or play it with their project team. Wonderful. Lastly, where can people find your game? Well, the game is available online at successfulprojects.com for $60 per game set. And I don't know how long I can hold on to that price, but I want to get it out to as many people as possible. I'm in some preliminary discussions with potential distributors, so you might see it in other locations down the road. Wonderful, Kay. Thank you so much for coming on to the program today and talking about your Project Risk board game. Oh, my pleasure. Thank you so much for having me, Cornelia. And here is our Gizmos disclaimer. We do not endorse the Gizmos that we present in this segment. We just want to tell you that they exist. Use your own judgment. The companies and individuals who are presenting a Gizmo here do not pay us for the privilege. But in this particular case, it's slightly different because Kay is giving two of these board games away to you, the listeners. As always, one of these board games goes to the subscribers of our premium podcast and one to everyone else. So if you are a subscriber of the premium version, you are automatically entered into the drawing. And if you are listening to our free version and you would like a chance to win one of these games, then please go ahead and write an email to pmpodcast at gmail.com. Put risk game as the subject and in the body of your email, tell me where in the world you are from. And of course, if you happen to be from Buenos Aires, then rest assured that I now know that Buenos Aires is in Argentina. Your email must reach me before the 11th of June 2009 to participate. But now let's move on to our main interview on sustainability with Jennifer Russell. 
Jennifer Russell drives good governance practices, from developing corporate social responsibility programs to driving regulatory compliance and strategic execution. She has consulted and worked for many high-tech multinationals, including Vodafone, Thomson, Genentech, Nikon and eBay, helping them improve efficiency and creating strong governance. Based on her broad experience in technology infrastructure, corporate governance, organizational development and change management, Jennifer works seamlessly throughout the organization to assess challenges and risks, develop practical solutions and provide implementation guidance. Profiled by Ziff Davis Media as a great mind in development, Jennifer speaks frequently on governance, risk and strategy. As an advisory board member of the Project Management Institute San Francisco Bay Area chapter, she brings thought leadership and skilled management to any project. Jennifer holds a BS in Business Administration from Indiana Wesleyan University, where she graduated summa cum laude. She is also a certified PMP. And now, enjoy the interview. The Project Management Podcasts. Feature interview. Today with Jennifer Russell, president of Mastodon Consulting. Hello, Jennifer, and welcome to the Project Management Podcast. Great. Great to be here, Cornelius. Yeah, finally. How long have we tried this or, or agreed that we need to do an interview? Three years? Four years? <laughs> <laughs> it's been something along that line. <laughs> a few weeks ago, I saw you speak on the topic of sustainability at the PMI Region 7 Leadership Summit. We were in San Francisco at that time. So let's start off with the very basics here. What is sustainability? Well, that's a great question. It's kind of funny because a lot of people, when they think of sustainability, they think that it just means green. You know, it just means uh, I'm going to buy a product and it's recyclable. But realistically, sustainability has a lot more implications. It's the, the, the general meaning of the word is, you know, you don't want to sacrifice tomorrow for the sake of today. So sustainability uh, can be fiscal sustainability, like I don't want to only have uh, a, a good quarter or a good year, I want my company to still be in business 50 years from now, a as well as social sustainability, I need to be good to my employees and I need to be good to the community around me uh, and not poison them or, or treat them like slaves. Um, and it's also environmental sustainability, which is what people think of in terms of how, how my company gets its raw materials and how it disposes of waste. So it's a, a lot of sustainability is looking at the operations of my company, of my organization, and trying to figure out, well, You know, are we doing things that make sense for the long term in all of these different ways? Okay, but why should I care and why should my listeners care? I mean, we're <laughs> project managers, we're managing projects, we have deadlines to meet, we have products to deliver. Why should I care about sustainability? I have a clear charter that says this is what you're going to be doing. Absolutely. Well, one of the things that's interesting and one of the reasons why we as project managers need to care is, you know, when I think about um, PMI, which I do all the time, um, I think, you know, PMI's goal is we want to make project management indispensable for business results. You know, that's the kind of the tagline when you get onto the website. Mm -hmm. And a lot of what um, project managers are focused on is executing organizational strategy. Um, slowly, you know, people are getting away from kind of having a tactical mindset of, okay, I'm assigned to this project and I just need to deliver it on time and on budget. You know, we're asking, oh, why is it that we, we need to do that? And what, what strategic objective will this fill? And having that kind of information helps us make really much better decisions about our projects. 
So with that in mind, since many organizations, even in this economic downturn, are starting to focus more and more on sustainability, um, it makes sense for us to be aligned with that. Since we need to help execute the organization's goals, um, we need to be out on the lookout uh, to try to figure out, well, hey, you know, what are the risks involved in my project? You know, not just risks in terms of like time and schedule and delivering my my project um, on time and on budget and all that sort of thing, but also what are potential risks that might come up if I if I'm looking at this construction project and I notice that there seems to be a problem with our waste that could that could bite us later on. You know, if I'm looking at the operations of my project and I see a risk that addresses sustainability, whether it's how we're paying our workers or environmental impact or whatever, these are things that I should bring up to management. It, it, it makes me more valuable as an employee, and it makes me more aligned with an organization's sustainability strategy. It's, it's a big part of our job. It's, not, it's no longer the job of the chief executive to just tell this great sustainability story. It's our job to make sure that we're executing against it. Okay, so we're kind of in the clouds at the moment, right? We're talking about sustainability in general and what it could mean and where we should take it. Let's let's get a few examples here. What does sustainability mean to a corporation? That's that's a great question, and and it kind of goes back to uh, a lot of the drivers for sustainability. Um, you know, when we think about um, why an organization wants to go into uh, pursue a sustainability strategy. Um, they could be looking at just, you know, whether it's shareholder pressure or whether it's a strategic objective on their part or whether they're just trying to manage their own reputation. So um, an example that comes to mind is um, Coca-Cola, uh, as they've diversified globally, they've been more and more focused on the supply of fresh water um, now, why is that? Well, you know, when I'm when I'm trying to sell uh, Coca Cola in India, um, I'm going to be doing a lot of my manufacturing um, bottling of Coca Cola right near where I'm going to be selling it. Well, India is a country that has some serious problems with uh, with water. Um, trying to make sure that they have enough water for agriculture, and they they've built a lot of deep bore wells, and 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 water management is really tough for them. So. When Coca-Cola went into India, they at first were saying, oh, you know, we're just going to start selling our product there. Well, it turns out that um, they did some analysis because farmers started getting more and more upset because they were seeing the water table around Coca-Cola plants dropping dramatically. And so Coke said, okay, well, let's see, let's see what kind of impact we really could be having on our community. And... Um, they did some analysis and said, oh, well, it looks like it's, it takes about 3.5 liters of water to make one liter of Coke. That's pretty serious, so we should probably do something about that. Um, but then they realized, oh, we were just thinking about the actual production of the bottle. We also grow sugar cane. We do all the, you know, we, we use water in cleaning the bottles and so so they did, they went back to the drawing board, did a little bit further analysis, and then realized, no, it's actually 250 liters of water Ouch. for every liter of Coke, <laughs> which, which borders on the obscene. <laughs> so they realized, you know, okay, maybe, maybe the farmers around here are right, and maybe we need to take responsibility for the impact that we're having in our local community. Um, so they turned around and... Uh, came up with a solution. They they came up with um, uh, drip irrigation in the area around the um, in the farms around the plant. So they offered that to the farmers so that they were able to use water a little bit more efficiently. And then they started doing their own um, water retention strategies. They put um, they put tracks on the roof of the building that went down into uh, aquifers about 150 feet below 
the surface of the ground so that they could start preserving rainwater. Because like 70% of rainwater disappears um, as it goes into the ground. So this way, um, they're trying to get to a point where they're actually water neutral, where they, they don't have a negative impact on the environment. They're trying to get to that by the end of this year. And that's pretty aggressive. But that kind of gives you an idea of, you know, this this project of just, you know, kicking off a new plant within within um, within a country. And it just it seems relatively small, but unless you do a lot of the analysis and do some amount of the work to realize, wow, we could be really risking the reputation of our our product and our company and they really paid the price for it before they figured out, oh, yeah, we're actually, we actually have a problem and we do need to do something about it. And so now they're, you know, they're, they're repairing that relationship. Okay. A little earlier on, you mentioned or you talked about the fact that we project managers should think about sustainability so we can make right decisions. But shouldn't sustainability be something that comes top down from the management level? Uh, let's take this and compare it to quality. Because in quality management, we have quite clearly a corporate quality policy that drives how we manage quality within our organization. So shouldn't we also have some kind of a sustainability policy issued by the organization, issued by management, and then automatically, pretty much automatically, every project would have to follow that sustainability policy? Yeah, that, that makes a lot of sense. Let me, let me take that in a couple different directions. Okay. First of all, I, I worked for an organization um, that will somehow remain nameless that didn't really have a big emphasis on quality. And they were fine, you know, putting out what my team would consider slop. Um, but we felt that, you know, you know, overall, the cost to the company was much higher in terms of customer complaints and departures of customers and so forth. So we ended up uh, implementing within our group higher quality standards and then demonstrating to the rest of the organization, hey, look, you know, if you have these higher quality standards, the, these are some of the longer term impacts that you get. Um, and I think that and we were able to influence the overall quality policy of our organization that way by, you know, get going rogue a little bit and taking responsibility within our team and going a little bit further. And I think the same kind of thing impacts uh, sustainability as well. I mean, obviously, direction from top management plays a significant role. But in the same way that... Um, that quality isn't just necessarily directed from above. Taking responsibility for sustainability is not just the job of the senior executives. You know, we talked about how project managers are key to execution. You know, being familiar with the details of day-to-day uh, -day operations, um, project managers tend to be in a better position to see some issues that might come up. I mean, I talked to a friend of mine who was uh, working at a, a, uh, a pharmaceutical company, and when they were uh, redoing some, some work on, uh, on one of their factories, he was able to see that some of the numbers that were coming out of the new factory showed that uh, water that was being issued back into the stream was a higher temperature than it should have been. Now, he could have just said, oh, well, you know, whatever. Nobody had asked any questions about it, not a big deal, but he escalated as, a, as an issue because overall, it's important that the organization understands that, hey, you know, you might be cooking some fish out there, and if we end up with a bunch of dead fish floating down the stream and they track it back to us, well, that's going to impact our company. So, you know, I'm not saying that that you would, you know, take over sustainability for your company, but you at least need to be aware of potential risks in terms of sustainability and look for opportunities for strategic advantage for your company that they can use from, you know, being more socially, environmentally and fiscally sustainable. I see. So the argument is that because we project managers 
usually are in the forefront of the new projects, of the new strategies that our organizations are working on. We see what's going on really right now, the new stuff that's coming, and therefore we can drive our organization to sustainability. Is, is, is that the argument here? That, that's absolutely right. I mean, one of the one of the mistakes that I make frequently is I, I tend to think, well, anything that I see, my senior executives must be aware of. But that isn't always <laughs> the case. <laughs> and, and, and it explains a lot of their strange decisions sometimes. So so, yeah, at least at least being responsible enough to to raise the issue and and put it in terms of risk and opportunity um, so management understands what their actions could be, um, you know, and then it's their decision. But at, you're at least doing your responsibility. And I should also note that um, back in uh, 2003, um, PMI changed their code of ethics. And there was, there, there was something that was slipped in there that I didn't even notice for a while, Um that's part of our code that says that we're responsible for um, addressing and looking at the, the the social and environmental impacts of our project. So it is part of our professional responsibility as project managers to look out for those things and to take them into consideration. Okay, I have to admit, I didn't know that either. I have to say, I didn't know it was on the, in the code of ethics. So that means that because... Since that was in 2003, the first time that I really heard about sustainability was maybe about a year ago, and then uh, the PMI brought it a couple of times in the PM network, and I, I saw that you gave a, a presentation at one of the global congresses, and then, of course, the, the presentation again a, a few weeks ago that I saw at the Region 7 meeting. So how old or how new, rather, is this thing? Sustainability in general? Yes. It's kind of, it's kind of interesting because um, when I think about um, the roots of this movement, for lack of a better word, um, you know, most of us think of uh, corporate philanthropy, which has been around forever, which, you know, the principle of corporate philanthropy is, you know, I make as much money as I can, as quickly as I can, doing business whatever way I can. And then once I decide I have enough money, um, that miraculous day, then I start um, giving it away and doing good things for for people. And, you know, so you think about, you know, uh, uh, great examples of this, you know, would be the the Rockefellers and and, uh, the Kennedys and and even Bill Gates more recently. Um, But... So that's kind of where the thought came from. But but more recently, I think a lot of the scandals that we've seen with, you know, Enron and WorldCom where, where companies were found, you know, lying to us and being fraudulent and and, and being irresponsible. And, and whenever we, we hear things about, you know, a pharmaceutical company fighting against, you know, giving away their drugs at low prices for, in in countries that can afford it, or we hear about a, a fast food company that that ignores obesity concerns, or we hear about a, a textile company that uh, is engaging in uh, in slave labor, child labor. I mean, it, it makes us angry, and and we didn't used to pay too much attention to this, and maybe it's because information is more available. But as a result of this, you know. Companies have a lot more risk on the table um, because people will, you know, they are actually even in this bad economy. They're making the change in their in their pocketbooks. They're they're going to the grocery store and saying, "Yeah, I'll pay a couple pennies more for the Dolphin Safe tuna." You know, pe- people are willing to support and and buy recycled paper products and so forth. So 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 companies are starting to see that you know there's negative impacts of you know doing business the old-fashioned way and there's positive impacts from you know taking advantage of of people's interests you know the the uh, Toyota with the Prius a great example I mean it's there's a lot of companies that have built significant strategic advantage around you know being on top of this focus by consumers to uh, to make sure that companies that they 
are associated with are companies that they can be proud of. Okay, so if the consumers wanted, why then is it that when you go out and you, uh, let's say we talk to a hundred project managers, <laughs> mm -hmm. I would guess at least 90 of them say, um, no, sustainability, not on the forefront of my thinking, probably not even anywhere in my project plan. So why is it so difficult to include sustainability into our everyday projects? Well, I, I think that that's changing. Um, I know that, that PMI did a, uh, a survey recently, and it was about 78% said that, that the company's focus on sustainability has an impact on their, the projects that they manage. So companies that are actually moving forward in this space and making a big deal about their sustainability strategy um, – Project managers are, are getting aligned with that. Um, where is that now? Obviously, we have a long way to go. And there, not every company uh, that you work with has a strong sustainability strategy. Chances are, if you're working for a large multinational with a couple hundred thousand employees, they probably have a sustainability strategy. But most of us work for much smaller companies, you know, uh, a, a 10 to 30 person company. And so sustainability hasn't, you know, you don't have a, a lot of shareholders that are putting pressure on you to respond to complaints. So in that case, it can be up to us. And so a lot of it is just educating ourselves about what the issues are that might be affecting our industries um, and trying to make sure that, that we address them in our work. I mean, if I'm a project manager that works for a textile company, you know, obviously I want to pay extra attention to uh, human rights issues when I'm doing my sourcing, if that's part of what I do. If I do projects within a uh, financial services part of an organization, I want to make sure that there's a lot of transparency and that it's not very easy to hide numbers and, and, and have unethical fiscal practices that don't make for fiscal sustainability. Um, and if I work for a construction firm or, you know, different industries have different issues and it's, it's, it's up to the project manager to make sure that, that you understand what those issues are and to start thinking about them in terms of, in terms of risks for your organization. All right, so let me close it out then with the following question. You've given us a few ideas what we can do uh, in various industries, but let's take this a little bit more general. How do you evaluate sustainability risk, something that every project manager can do on their projects? Oh, that's, that's great. Um, for, for sustainability risk, you, you'd evaluate it the same way you rank all other project risks, so by probability and impact. So what's the likelihood that um, a social, environmental, ethical issue is going to arise on this project? Um, what, what's the potential impact of that risk arising, whether it's on your project specifically or, or on the company as a whole or the community at, at, at large? Um, if you integrate these kind of considerations into your uh, project planning, risk management, execution, risk can be minimized and, uh, and you can be a part of moving forward in terms of uh, social good of your firm. You, you can influence your companies towards responsible behavior, whether it's the issue is human rights or employee rights, environmental protection, supplier relations, you name it. Um, and, you know, and partnering with, uh, with the local community on, on larger issues that come up is also another, another way of getting around that. But it's, it's really important to understand these risks and, and, and doing the analysis up front is really, is really critical. And, you know, what I, what I think it comes down to, Cornelius, is, is ultimately, you know, sustainability is too important for, to leave to somebody else to address. It's something that, that we need to take on ourselves as well. All right. That's a call to action to everybody out there. <laughs> Jennifer, thank you so much for your time. Appreciate it. Great. Always great talking to you. And that was our interview with Jennifer Russell on sustainability.
That's it for today. Thank you very much for listening. Please don't forget to send me an email if you would like to win one of those Project Risk board games. And of course, if you like our podcast, then why don't you forward it to your friends, your co-workers, your project management colleagues or anyone else who might enjoy it. As always, you can find us on the web at thepmpodcast.com. If you are a project manager who wants to become a PMP, then the easiest way to do so is with our sister podcast, the PM Prepcast, and study for the exam by watching over 38 hours of video training from pmprepcast.com. And if you are already a PMP, then stop by at pmlectures.com, where we go beyond just delivering PDUs. We give you exclusive training from the brightest minds in project management today. Please send your emails to pmpodcast at gmail.com. And when you write, please tell me where in the world you are writing from. And as we have learned today, Buenos Aires is in Argentina. And finally, we have this. If it happens once, it's ignorance. If it happens twice, it's neglect. If it happens three times, then it's policy. Until next time.